The, Hello. the podcast is a little earlier today. I had car problems. Heather, car problems miracle. <laughs> and my chauffeur arrived at before the shop opened. Listen, if you miracle. need my services, they're on my time. I drop my son off at school. Usually people mean I'm showing up late, not before the mechanic I'm shop I'm an opens. early bird person, but I will go to bed at 6. <laughs> I wasn't even awake when I could hear all those squeaky voices. <laughs> I just texted her. I'm here. <laughs> Down the stairs. Make sure everything is turned is down. Is everything turned down? Are you just being loud as usual? Yeah. I was trying to bring the energy. Bring new year, new energy. Oh, yeah. New what is your new What is your word of the year? Word of the year. sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> is that your word? No, I didn't even think of a word. What if you had to think of a word right now? Oh, exercise oh really really really, really slept on what it last drag year. Of a word. <laughs> um okay yeah so we're a little earlier if it sounds like i'm asleep it's because i was <laughs> but then i had to take my car to the mechanic shop the car is so old it was before powered windows came out so they actually called window sills which means you have to physically take like them out Heather, when she if you ask her to roll down the window it looks like i'm there's breaking no into. rolling down somebody asked me to roll down the window at light i said tee, tee, tee. <laughs> But like it's, it looks like I'm breaking into the car, taking the windows out. But the windows are the car's so old, the windows don't. You can't buy replacements. So Heather's treating these windows like like I have like, babies, like two twins. They're worth a bazillion dollars, right? Because if they break, I have no windows in a car in a rainy. Area. And listen, it is a high afford. <laughs> so I had to take the windows out, dry, twenty minutes. My <laughs> eyes, the your tears. eyes, you know when it gets really windy <laughs> yeah. and you, they kind of get watery. You no, know, someone's like, oh, she had a rough day. No, I'm freezing. <laughs> So I like, dropped off the car. Does there. the car have heat though? It only has heat that comes out at your feet. Your feet heat. <laughs> <laughs> Does not have heat that drives your face. I could not have this car any less. <laughs> Me too. I am so grateful for my vehicle. <laughs> if you guys have a little midlife crisis and you end up thinking a 25, 30 year old car is the move. Please call me first. <laughs> I would like to have an intervention with you personally. So that's why we are so early to the podcast today. I will say I'm a little peckish. We usually, what does usually peckish mean? A little hungry. We usually eat before we the We usually podcast. do the podcast at 1 or 2 Yeah, so my stomach gets literally it is growl. I wonder if they will be able to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Just make an elephant noise. You want to know what it is. Okay, what we wanted to talk about was actually... I could introduce the podcast... Oh, sorry, it's a podcast. They have old cars going. <laughs> this is the Baking It Down podcast. It's the audio offshoot of a Facebook group called Sugar Cookie Marketing Parentheses Group. We didn't try real hard on the name. We were like, let's just cut to the chase. I don't Sugar think Cookies I'm really Marketing. really unique at naming things. I'm that not, was not. That I'm not, cute. Time not to really shot. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> but that group allows us to kind of see the topics that are talked about most. And I know what you're thinking, new year, new me. They're probably going to do goals, but actually we're not. <laughs> Nobody likes goals. 9% of people keep their New Year's resolutions to How the many? end. How many? 9%. Yeah, I'm part of the... I'm part of the... <laughs> so yeah i mean great yeah i love goals my personal thing is to never start them on like i had an Heather is vehemently against starting a goal on a monday i had an ex-boyfriend and i'd be like he'd be like here's all these things i want to accomplish he's all like some of them were small some of them were large and i'd be like okay let's do it like it was like not 8 p.m. on a Tuesday. Let's get started. And he was like, no, it has to be the first of the day, the first of the month, the first of the hour, the first of the year. Like there was so <laughs> – and it was just a way for him. That Heather I calls with this – Moving the goalpost and kicking the kicking can. Kicking the can down the road. Like, meaning when you get to the object that you want, you kick it even farther so you don't have to take action. Yeah, you're on like, it. oh, this money isn't that good. We'll wait till next month. I exclusively <laughs> date kicking the can up. <laughs> Sorry, I've gotten up close and personal. I've just been kicking the man. To the camp. <laughs> <laughs> Kicking their camps. Uh, and then moving the goalposts is kind of that once you reach it, then you're like, no, no, this, you know, you you never really it have to arrive there. It makes you feel better about not reaching a goal because you're like, well, I'm just going to scooch it down. So I can't ever say that I failed at it. <laughs> if, you, if you wonder how to be successful with goal setting, you need to get yourself a twin. Because never in my life have I been able to say I want to do something, not done it, and you not brought it up later. You're welcome. <laughs> so, so in my world, don't say it unless you're fully committed to doing it. And a lot of times around this New Year's, and I know we weren't supposed to even talk about this, he's thinking. Your computer just... He's, he's like, well, this is early, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> usually yeah. just hit the on button by now. <laughs> uh, usually when we come to New Year's, a lot of us get the high 
That is like, Heather sniffing water. He's morning. also waking up. <laughs> this yeah. morning routine is weird. <laughs> it's all out of it. <laughs> uh, when we come to New Year, a lot of us get the high off of telling people that we're going to do something. Yeah. We get all the accolades, the encouragement, and it feels great. And the dopamine high it we does. get. But then that means we we fall in love with announcing what we're doing rather than the execution and completion because of what we're doing. Because execution and completion is grueling. It's and not. it's lonely. It's not structure. People are being like, you haven't done that yet? When you're like, yeah. I'm surprised to I be went honest, to the gym today. To learn anything new, you're exceptionally embarrassingly bad at it. Just ask my Procreate pencil. Ask, ask my first cookies. Yeah, that it's I embarrassing made. to start something yeah. new. But oftentimes when we say, hey, I'm starting something new, everyone's like, oh, I'm so encouraging. Great, great, great. And then all of a sudden you realize, wow, I'm horrendous at this. Uh-huh. It's going to take an exponential amount of time investment and work and trial and error that's not as like then you go post your cookie bob the blob yeah and people are like oh yeah <laughs> stop but it felt really good to say you're doing something it felt really bad to actually do yes. the thing but we have to fall in love with doing the thing so i'd encourage you to don't tell anybody your new year's resolutions just do them just work in silence work mm-hmm. and in the night work through it and when you reveal like hey this is what i've been working on all year Let's say we're in December 2024 and you're like, oh, I got into cookies and now Bob the Blob is a, a distant memory. And oh, you get announced, not only did you start this in January, you told nobody, you worked in silence, now you're actually pretty good at it. Yeah. That's right. when you're really going to get that accolade that really just washes the brain in a dopamine head. Last year I said, you know what, I'm not going to just be the sugar cookie baker. I'm going to learn other things. So I took the class by Gina Wade, Cake Pop Gina. I think you did that in silence. I didn't know yeah. until a cake pop arrived. Took the cake decorating class. Mm-hmm. Finally made a cake. And then me and Heather are taking a sourdough class in March. Me? And maybe a little sourdough <laughs> red <baby. laughs> I'm already coming up with some names. Apparently you name your starter. Our brother-in-law is a Someone said starter. theirs was Danny DeVito. No. <laughs> so Corey and I are. Right, yeah. I right. really. If you have little starter names. <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy. It's know. like, and Jeremy, our brother-in-law is like telling us, oh, you feed it. It eats. It sounds disgusting. It sounds like a child. It sounds like a pet. You burp it. I guess. <laughs> yeah. It overeats. It undereats. You got to make it. It cries a little bit. You got to clean it off. I know. Right. I'm excited. So. We love bread. Just like we said, don't tell people you're. Oh, yeah. Into bread. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that's not what we're talking about in today's podcast. But join that Facebook group. It's a great resource. I got some Facebook lives I got to add. Nice. A, a free source. It's a free source. Nothing in that main group is paid. It's all just accessible. It's a great conversation. It is heavily modded, so likely you won't see these posts anywhere else. And it's we make be it a safe space. I don't want you to feel new and feel like you can't post in there. Well, that brings us to a great topic is creating community groups. Now, Corey had started a local community group a year ago. Right? It was a year and a half ago. A year it and a half June ago. June second. Wow, that was specific. I had to look it back. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're like June second at two oh three p.m. I set a goal <laughs> and worked in silence. Uh, but uh, in this past week, there was the admin step down. Okay, so now the because you had two admins, you and another person, and you. Okay, well, I can't really you call what I was doing. Right? <laughs> I was the, if you get scammed, I'll remove the scammer. Out. <laughs> yeah, so she stepped down. Totally fine. Life happens. She had to give attention to where attention was due. But now we have kind of an orphan group. If if I'll say I wasn't working on it. I was hard. like, okay, I was working, but the the group at one point can run itself a little bit, right. especially community groups. But having someone step down and then no one step into that role. It was like, oh my goodness. So Corey and I had to sit down and come up with a strategy to kind of maintain and grow this group with new management. Yeah. Essentially put the banner outside under new management, right? I know. And which and that is was not bad like, on us. You hold your breath. Yeah. I I will say that people knew me. In the, it wasn't like I was no, I like. No, I know. But me, they were like, who Oh, they you? were like, is this your <laughs> fake account? Right. Because Corey and I, because you, Corey, has the last name Mira, and I have miracles. Everything I post, people are like, oh, Even like when your first post, people, people are like, is this a scammer? I said, that is a great question. I'm glad you're asking. <laughs> you can always ask in the sugar cookie marketing group. <laughs> this is a scam. Uh, so anyways, back to community groups. We're not talking about the sugar cookie marketing group. We're talking about a hyper local community group, which a lot of you guys have asked about. A lot of you guys could create and a lot of you guys are already in In them them. yeah i know a lot of your lead sources in these community groups so you say well how could i possibly compete with a community group that already exists it's going to be a little bit dependent on your area Mm -hmm. however facebook has very much encouraged everybody create a duplicate group it it really does does not care (laughs) so we are while we start this group has had a foundation of members i think it's at three thousand now we live in extremely populated area so we work in ratios if you live in a uh, not densely populated area, our 3,000 could be your 300 and it would yeah. be the equivalent uh-huh. results. 
Um, but also, if you live in a not populated area, you probably don't have seven groups for the same topic. Absolutely. So if you, I mean, the people who should really tune into this podcast are people who do not have community groups. Yeah. And then the people who should let an ear get peaked is if you're in a community group, it's got kind of stricter. It's got kind of weird, and you think you can do it a little bit yeah. better. Or the 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 mods and admin team have checked out. Oh yeah, which happens a lot. Groups are just a rogue, rogue not, uh, air duct cleaning. Groups. You're not being. These groups is like this thankless job. Yeah. And so a lot of times admins and mods will get busy. Uh-huh. And and the first thing that goes on the back burner is that one community local group you made that has a weird drama. I would delete it. Here's the crazy thing is in the past, you know, I've been on Facebook. I've been working on Facebook for oh, I don't know, a, over a decade for sure. And groups are kind of the newer iteration. You know, they, they, Facebook's constantly testing it's in the these last things. Few I can't wait years till they've become they've existed in, and then they've become yeah. these kind of powerhouses. When groups first existed, you could delete the group at any time. Now you can't <laughs> delete a group unless every member's removed. What you guys see with the Vendi Blendy is we hire uh, this VA out of India, extremely nice guy. If he ever left us, I'd be, I would so, be so sad. sad. I email him on the first of every month. <laughs> to bam. I see it. <laughs> Come out of the bank. <laughs> but uh, what happens is in the Vendi Blendy, he has to physically remove 8,000 people manually. It's two clicks for every removal True. to be able to archive I, the group. You can always pause a group. Though. Yeah, you can ar- archive and pause a group. You can't delete them. Yes. Every, to delete a group, the final person must be an admin who deletes themselves. <laughs> and I'll do this final warning. And so anyways, you have a lot, which has created a lot of these orphaned groups, uh-huh. these groups with no management. Facebook is doing something about that, yeah, which that's means crazy. Facebook realized there's a lot of these relic groups that are taking up space, not adding value. People are joining them and not liking the experience. So Facebook, what it's t- t- testing out is turning around to the members of the group and saying the admin has been inactive. We've reached out to them a couple of times. We're demoting them and you can take over the group. And here's Here's the crazy thing. You can't. A new admin cannot delete the founding admin. No. So the founding admin has its roots. Has it. the on and off switch. It, it yeah. really does. But what they'll do is if you – it says if you have met a certain criteria. I don't know what the criteria is. I'm sure you have to be active, maybe a member of so long uh-huh. or whatever and made so many posts. Then they give it to you. But the, it's not just to you. 15 people yes. at a given time can all become admins at a given time. The problem with that is everyone thinks a group should be run a certain uh-huh. way. And it's usually not the same uh-huh. as the person next to you. But you have no power over the other random person who just I got know. added. Yeah. So it's they're figuring it out. But it's uh-huh. so crazy that now Facebook, it, they want these groups to grow. Mm-hmm. And they're going to grow them in spite of, the admin. of you. Uh-huh. <laughs> just a wild thought. Anyways, so... Corey and I broke down kind of what we're in the middle of this. We're in the forest. The transition. (laughs) Yeah. We're in the trenches here. But we kind of broke down what we're doing to kind of reinvigorate this group and broke it down for you guys who want to get one started. Yes. Because Corey did start this. It is hyper, hyper low. I don't actually live in the area where the group is. This is why I've been dead it Okay. Well, let's go on our list because you're Um, right. They'll all go towards all the tips and tricks. Right. So we want to start off with one branding. Everything has to start off with branding. Once that's dialed in, and I don't want you guys to get stuck on this, you can always rebrand. You yeah. can always refresh a brand, but it does need to start with that. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, you guys are thinking of funny puns because of Danny Dovito. Dovito. You're going to have two does in there. Danny Do. Do. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Anyways. You are going to think of these funny puns. I'm going to actually encourage you to do brand plus location plus state because branding can be the fun, cute part, but the location needs to. So what Heather's, needs Heather's saying okay. branding, but it's the naming is part of the branding and Heather's talking about the group name. Right. So let's say the location and state, I'm just going to use where I live, sure. Burke, Virginia. Uh-huh. So my brand would be Beautiful Babes. And location in Burke State, Virginia. I think yours would Beautiful be babes. single ladies. Mine would be living in Burke. People who need rides <laughs> in Burke, Virginia. <laughs> so you see that we have the, the it's called a keyword plus location, mm-hmm. right? And that's what we talk about in SEO. But in this thing, it really works because again, if it has a search engine, it has a search feature, it is a search engine, it can be optimized. Yes. So you have to think that when someone's new yeah, to the if you area, move to an area, what do you go first? I have no idea hot babes in Burke is it's like Virginia. anything. B- Virginia. But what I'll type in is the word Burke, Virginia. Mm-hmm. And then I'll see how there's hot babes in Burke. Let's say I started okay, let's not do the hot babes. I don't want to dominate. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it of one. <laughs> Admin, single top member, employee of the week. 
Let's say let's say I have a motorcycle in Burke, Virginia. So we have bikers in Burke, Virginia. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got maybe you can the triple, you know, the B there, cute, whatever you want the branding to be, but yeah. we need to have it include Burke, VA, or Burke, Virginia. Bikers now here's Burke. the thing, you guys, you biker did, babes in Burke. <laughs> Beautiful bike face <laughs> in Burke, Virginia. A lot of these. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and more than one. <laughs> Double <Double-A. laughs> Um Now, with your group, you did not add the state identifier, Virginia. And there's actually a lot of Lake Ridge. There is a lot of Lake Ridge. I was Googling. I said, oh, there's a there's Lake Ridge. There's a Lake Ridge, New Jersey. There's a, a Lake Ridge, Ridge South Carolina. <laughs> so in hindsight, would you have added VA? Probably so. Okay. So I would say to people who are thinking about starting these groups, add that state identifier because otherwise – so we had this client out of Gainesville, Virginia. Gainesville, Florida is actually a place where a college yeah. is, like a very more, popular Florida state. A more popular state. Gainesville. <laughs> right. So a lot of the people joining that page were looking actually for stuff going on in Gainesville, Florida – and, and they that, were yeah. unfortunately finding Gainesville, Which, Virginia. And it creates the lack of a user experience because what that group's going to experience is people leaving. Facebook hates that. Or they'll join and they'll never post. They'll never post. So we got dead weight. Yeah. So by having the location and state identifier together, you can kind of eliminate the people who are lost. I'm guessing. Yeah. Then we, well, I'm going to go as far as to say this. And again, I'm going to tell you guys, running a group is not, is not easy. <laughs> it's it's involved. Difficult. <laughs> right. And now I'm going to tell you to run not only a group, but another page. And the reason is Facebook is rolling out ads to groups, but for Corey's group, there is no ability to run a direct ad to it yet. Now, with the Vendy Blendy group, I was able to, but it piped it through my personal yeah, self. Weird. I was yeah. saying like, Heather. People I knew from high school were like, oh, like the Vendy Blendy. I said, oh my so, goodness. Like and they're like, why can't you no, shoot your real words? Vendy. Yeah, my cousin <laughs> I haven't seen in 10 years is like, like the ad. <laughs> Okay. But if you have a page, you can run at, you've always been able to run ads as pages. So it allows you to have a couple different things. And Corey's going to get ahead of me. I'm going to tell her no. Sorry, 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 sorry. That will be a point we get later. But having a page and a group together, you can connect the two. And you can have the page admin, the group, which we'll talk about in a second. But there is a lot of value added. Now, the pros and cons of everything in life is you'll have to manage a whole nother page. Mm Now, once your group starts scoring, you can kind of cross post one to the other, but it is a lot of work initially. However, I'm still going to encourage it. I will say the benefits outweigh the cons. Mm -hmm. Cons being it's more work. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. If you're running ads, the credibility that is from an ad coming from a page that has a group in all the same name feels a lot better then maybe your baking page running an ad to I it agree. or something like that. Keep in mind also, we've got now two pieces of real estate in Facebook search. So if you have a page and a group that match each other, then when somebody searches for sugar cookie marketing, they're not only going to see the sugar cookie marketing group, they're going to also see the sugar cookie marketing page because we have two pieces of real mm-hmm. estate there. You also have the dissonance of maybe they'll choose one and not the other, but something we can handle. Once they're in the funnel yeah, somewhere, so we can We can invite them to either or. Yeah. Uh, branding graphics, cohesiveness. So when you create a Facebook group, you get these default kind of, uh, it's a style of graphic design. I don't know what to call, I call it corporate something Yeah. with these people with really big arms, these drawings with yes. real big arms, real <laughs> tiny hands and tiny heads. <laughs> you get default ones of those. I'm going to actually encourage you because a lot of you guys are already using Canva. Jump into Canva. I know they have template yeah. size for Facebook groups and create a custom group, uh, cover photo and have that match your pages, have the branding cohesive on both entities. And maybe one can, d- d- you know, d- delineate. Delineate? What does that word mean? It's such a big word. Delineate. On a Tuesday got, morning. Got, it was early and I said, you know. Delineate. About, delineate. Determine. Delineate. Describe or portray something precisely. That's exactly delineate. the word. Delineate. You go brain here at 1030, 1018. <laughs> yeah, it'll delineate that one is a group and one is a page. But that branding and the cohesive branding, and you know this with your bakery pages, will say, okay, these two are together. These yes. things are the same. Uh-huh. And I am safe with both. Uh, so definitely, and a lot of people are like, ah, just let it, it's fine, whatever Facebook came up with. That did, that signals to me as an end user that this is an, a group not managed well or not managed actively. Yeah. That default graphic. Because we've, like, social media has been around now for so long yeah. that we our brains are trained. So if even if you're like, ah, I think it's fine, it's kind of cute, I like the little bobbleheads. Why not give yourself a leg up? Even if the leg up is a small one, it takes two seconds. You have a can even Canva free can make it. Yeah. Just go ahead and create those branding graphics. Now, here's what I'm going to suggest from a branding perspective. Don't include your bakery business. Not yet. That looks, we're trying to create a value added community, not a a kiosk. Not not an additional 
page for your bit. Right. Your this is this is going to be completely separate. And so you almost have to put on two different hats. This is not your bakery hat. This is your yeah. local community group hat. So a great way to help this is to take a photo of something in your community that's very no, no, Memorable. noticeable. Yeah, something that yeah. your community knows about. I think the Lake Ridge sign in your community. Yeah, because it's been around since. Traffic on Old Bridge would also be one. And yeah. then people who live in that community are going to resonate and say, know, oh, my goodness, I that's think, where yes. I live. And I've seen that all the time. It creates this kind of like when we see something that we – like if you're watching a murder show and it's like they murdered each other in Manassas. Yeah. I'm like, I know. I've driven yeah. through there. What you don't want is to take like a picture of a flower. I, that flower might be on your front porch <laughs> in that location that you live, but it's not adding value. Right. It's not adding brand recognition. Right. It's not helping you. It's beautiful. Beautiful. But, but it's only a step above that default graphic yeah. you get. <laughs> um, the funny trope I've seen on TikTok now is when anyone posts something like a, you know, there's a lot of car accidents or natural disasters or important things happening. And the first sec or comment will be like, oh my goodness, I live on the same planet where this happened. Because so <laughs> many people hilarious. like to say, oh, I live down the street. Or yes. someone's like, oh man, I drove through there when yeah, I was two years old. We're all looking for a way to connect uh -huh. to something. Yeah. So giving people that, that, like you said, brand recognition, I live there. I know what this uh -huh. is. I sat in traffic at that traffic light. Uh, that really encourages group growth without having to do a lot of effort. Now, group settings, uh, keep them private. Public groups have gone through a couple changes in the last year. I think that Facebook is using them to capture people at the expense of the quality of the group. Yeah. Unfortunately, with a public group, you don't have to be in the group to see the post. So there's no mystery there. You're uh, yeah, you able know, to take ridiculous. part without taking part. If someone searches your name and you were – You posted in a public group. It pulls group. everything in you've ever posted in a group set to public. I would hate that. I would hate that. It would be a lot of dog groups though. Yeah. English Bulldogs. Was They're going to be like, well, where is <laughs> – English dogs. Bulldogs of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why public groups are – it's so funny. When I got this piece of junk car, I joined – you know, someone was like, oh, I've created a group for these piece of junk cars so yeah. we can all be pieces of junk together. So I joined it and I posted something in it. And a couple cookie people said, I don't know what I'm seeing here. And I said, how are you seeing anything? And then I realized that the group was set to public, That's immediately hilarious. deleted everything in embarrassment. Left the group. Okay, I'm just waiting for that group to say, what's up, Andy, bloody Heather? Yeah, so why you might think like, oh, but I'm I'm taking all this time to make all this amazing content. I want more people to see it because if they see it, they'll join the group. You want a little bit of exclusivity. And I know we're cutting our nose to spider face. There's a problem at which a group meets a certain threshold that you can no longer switch between public and private. Here's what I'm going to say. Out the gate, make it private. Uh, what happens with public groups, there is no – you can just join immediately, right? I always know I'm in a, pri a public group because it immediately accepts <laughs> yes. my join request. That also means it's accepting the join request um, of spam, yes. scammers. Uh, I want it set to private, but I want to set it to visible. You can set groups to hidden. That means they are not discoverable at all. You don't want that. Yeah, that means invite only from you. That's that's a little too dialed in. You're going to have a really <laughs> specific group because you chose who joined it. But I want it to be – Specific group or just you? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> your neighbor. <laughs> yeah, I don't – I want to like to encourage you guys. When you create these groups, they're not naturally filling up on their own. And we'll talk about that yeah. in a second. But private, visible, and then discoverable, which means Facebook can recommend this group. And I will say, Facebook has really gone out of it its way really to recommend has. groups. Facebook is pushing groups, and that usually means – Well, they've already started the monetizing it. Um, but what Heather's meaning, that is you can – have your group be recommended to other people so they can join it. They within can find Facebook, it yeah. within Facebook. The The con to that is they can recommend, recommend other your, groups to your members. Essentially, if you look at it as a competing group, yeah, it's going to pull your members in. Now, you may be like, well, I don't want to help anybody else. Listen, we're, our content is going to be so good. That we don't care. They don't, we don't care. We don't care. Yeah, blinders on. That's yeah, kind of what we're, we're just looking to grow and, and we're looking to show. And then the last point of this group creation is admins, multiple admins, and make that page the admin. So what happens, and you got you guys got to turn on two-factor authentication. You got to have complex passwords because, again, as I always say, the pro of having multiple admins is that if something happens to you, they can get you in. But if something happens to them, like if they get compromised, <laughs> then we got to go in the yeah, other way. Uh -huh. So, you know, I'd almost say if you have anyone as a secondary admin on your pages – also require them to enable two-factor authentication and give them a password. I know it's frustrating. They're not going to want to do it. My little sister can't sign out of Facebook because she doesn't know the password to get back in. Yeah. And I guarantee you it's the name of one of her cats. So I'm sure, I'm sure the scammers know as well. <laughs> so I would say like Corey has me, I have pretty strict um, password management on myself. So she's always adding You're me. 
We're not going to bring you on. I say start a page. Okay. Corey's like, can you get this password for me? It's your password. I happen to save it. Yeah, but I don't get know you why on. My last pass didn't have it. Yeah, you got a problem. Man. Well, didn't I? Because I was taking some of these, uh, some of the logins what? for this, and I was like, most of them. Save one. <laughs> <laughs> good. So if you want, I always again, Facebook's kind of changing how the admin thing works to prevent this scamming thing. But you'd always want an admin in your page. Uh, you used to be able to boot the primary admin if you were set as admin, but now they have a hierarchical structure of admins. And then you can set moderators. Moderators cannot save you. They cannot add new admins. They can only manage the group. Uh-huh. So they're not exactly what we're talking about here. That's more for content management. If you're like, a, I trust no one. Add your spouse, your sister. I don't trust them either. <laughs> Yeah, kicking the game. Your kid who never has gets on Facebook just to have an access point to it. I I always feel a little leery when I see a group because I can see it. Out, I mean, due to Facebook's new transparency laws, you can see who manages a group and you can see who manages a page uh, under the about yeah. section. When it says this page is not managed by anybody else, I'm like, Oof, I know you are Eggs, risky. One basket. Meet each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So to recap branding, and this is kind of that group creation, uh, brand location state is going to be the name. Create the page and the group at the same time. Connect them. You can do that within the Facebook group settings. Uh-huh. You can also do it within the new page experience settings like because yours shows me that you're connected to that group. Um, when you do that, the group it will say this group is by the page rather than a personal profile. I, I As an admin, people are going to DM you if you don't want that. Make the page. Yeah. Do that. Uh, branding graphics, make them cohesive. Find something identifiable in your area. Uh, the about section. Oh, I skipped this one. I'm sorry. Your about section is a huge component of search it optimization. It truly is. I can't t- describe to you how many groups I see with a single sentence in their about section. I don't love a good meaty about section. It helps you rank. If Excuse group growth is hard, huh? Diet Coke, I need that. Thank you, Justin Bieber. <laughs> Trying to get me through it. <laughs> <away. laughs> I got my Yeti holder thing. Our oh. sister gave us these Diet Coke Yeti holders. I gotta they say, are... I've used it extensively. Okay, listen. Your Coke, your Diet Coke can will become warm in less than 0.02 seconds. The mechanic shop. So I've been taking this car. <laughs> Where does this podcast go? <laughs> <laughs> you do it. Well. Yetis. Okay, Come on. Let me get okay. mechanic shop. Send me another video. The mechanic shop, and I liked this. They sent me a whole video of my car, and I'm like, what are you doing? But they're telling me, this is what your car looked like, like when it came in. We didn't break it. Like, poo-poo now. Like, he's zooming in on little rock yeah. Like, I know they're there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, that is really smart to cover your buttons, It though. is, it is. You know when people are like, yeah, they said they didn't get their order. If you took a picture, and I'd hate to live in this paranoia universe, but if you took a picture of their order before you packed it. What if you were like, can you smile with your order? I would love it for social media. And I was like, I never got my order. Yeah. I guess this lady's a liar. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Back to the about section, which is a point I skipped. I do actually think this is one of the most important aspects of it. Answer in your about section who, what, where, when, why. If you answer those five questions, you're going to create enough content to help it be ranking. Uh huh. Because these groups can also rank in Google search. Yeah. But you can also create enough information that somebody knows what they're getting into, and it sets you apart from your competing groups. It can be a way to welcome new members. You know, sometimes when the group doesn't have an about section, you're like, okay, I'm going into the wild, wild west. It also makes it feel orphaned. It makes it feel unmanaged. It It makes it feel, I'm a little scared. So- in the Vendi Blendy, I constantly, I, I hate it. When you yeah. update the about section of a group, it creates a post in the group. No, I go back and run and delete the old <laughs> yeah. one. Uh, but in that, if you do it before you start growing the group, you won't have that weird, like, what's this? Because <laughs> it creates that yes. post. But in it, I'd like to say, like, hey, I uh, we're boss babes who bike and burn. <laughs> And we are looking for female on motorcycles who are interested in growing this community. So that's the who, what. This is a Facebook community group where we talk about only motorcycles, whatever we want to niche it down. We don't want to just... Driving high of boots. High boots of babes in Burke, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> no, me. Six double bees. But uh, and so who, what, where. Now, we, again, you might be like, but I just said boss babes who bike in Burke. And you say, this is Burke, Virginia. It's a, a subsidiary. It's a suburb of Washington, D.C., just 15 minutes. Yeah. Kind of really explaining again, this is not the Burke in Florida. <laughs> this is Burke, Virginia babes. <laughs> and, and why? What is the mission of this? We were here to connect women who want to be beautiful. <laughs> it's, been, it's going to feel redundant. However, you in SEO, there's keyword density. Again, we don't want a keyword stuff, which is using Burke, 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 Burke. <laughs> but we want to constantly reiterate what this is, and it helps that ranking. And it helps people join the group. So, yeah. like, you're not having to be like, one like, one time I was in a group and someone was like, where's the, he'll have eyes over by Plexus International. I was like, 
what are you asking? And they're like, yeah, I'm in one word of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> so that about section can kind of, one, describe to people and get the ideal audience that you want. So if somebody's like, well, I'm just here to complain about Trash Day, then we're like, okay, no, we're only doing like whatever that is. We're only talking about bikes, yes. right? Things like that. So, you know, two wheels, no cages. <laughs> That's what they call car people. <laughs> As if everyone with a bike doesn't also have a car. <laughs> um, okay, number two, the content strategy is the growth strategy. Now, a lot of people say, well, I started this group. This is where most groups this is where <laughs> This is where the do or die. This is the difference between a successful group yeah. and an unsuccessful group. You're going to want to create value-added content. That It's always going to be the foundation. People want value-added content. They don't want to be sold to. They want to learn stuff. They want resources. This is the hardest part when you're starting a group because you are often creating value-added content that nobody's reading. And that will destroy you. That that There's nothing that will make you want to Quit. be in that group less than saying like, wow, I just, I literally went to this place, filmed a whole video and like it says viewed by one and that one person is you. And <laughs> disrespectfully, Facebook groups under 250 I members know. tell you it's how many so people saw. Rude. I know. <laughs> it tells you how many and pops them up in little heads so you can even see their faces. No. How many people viewed the post versus, and then you can do the ratio. How 50 people viewed one reaction. Yeah, I know. It feels almost like you're in a Petri dish and people are judging you. It is very hard to overcome this part of a group. It is. A great way to do that is to have a somebody, a member in the group where you – it's a sister or a friend and you said, listen, I I, I got to have – I'm going to post something. I want you to act like it's the best thing you've ever heard all week. And you know that's how we grew Sugar Cookie Marketing Group is me and Heather were in the same room. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a post about how yeah, to – I'm going to like it. I'm going to ask you this question. I'm not going to answer it. So we had two conversations going. One in person, one on the computer. <laughs> but it was very weird. It's very disconcerting to write, to do a lot of, let's say, investigative research. I'm going to this new place that's opening. I'm going to learn who got this commercial uh -huh. lease. People love commercial lease announcements they in do. local yes, groups. Yes, they do. But let's say you, you, found, you actually made a phone call to the commercial real estate office, found this information, posted it, found, drove out there, took a picture of the commercial space, and nobody reacts to it. Yeah. Nothing says, this isn't it. Because in marketing, a lot of it's testing. Testing. Does your audience respond? Well, when there's no audience, there will be no response. <laughs> so it is a little bit of blindly trusting this growth strategy process of creating value-added content. Value-added content in groups is nothing about sales. I'd almost say I don't want you to I know that you have a bakery. I want to tell you, I follow my own group rules. No sales until Saturday. No I see you. Saturday. And you use a hashtag. I, I do everything because I don't want you to think that I'm selling to you. I'm one of the many. Right. Yeah, and then for the rest of the week, Corey's adding content as if she has no bias at all because we can't let groups have biases. Right. Um, we just got to stay the rules, right? We can't – like some people are like, can I do this? I'm like, I'm so sorry. It violates the rules, not because I don't like you as a person or mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to see you succeed. I've got to follow these rules yeah. for the safety of the group. Nothing against you. Love you to the band back. Uh-huh. So that value out of content, you're always going to lead with that. You're going to lead with that on your bakery page too. But the bakery page is more about selling. It's and you more can about do this more cookie. behind the scenes. This is people don't want to say what you – Not in a community like group. <laughs> community groups are already infiltrated by sales posts that take, take, take and no give – uh, we're reversing that to create these value-added content groups. We're going give, 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 take, yes. and reverse that order. Like I said, talking to yourself is going to be your – you will be your favorite fan. And it helps when you can bring in a mom, a sister, somebody who knows. It like, does. I don't even live in Lake Ridge, but I can tell you since, I like that you guys got, got school off for that snowstorm. Since my mom and sisters do not support me, I like to come out my own post. Mm -hmm. It do does. It it's called <laughs> – what is it? It's not social engineering. Is it when you comment on yes. your – Rigging the system is Rigging what it's called. Rigging the system. Uh, videos. So Corey goes about town. A great example is a little bake shop, Angel's Bake Shop. That's where she took the cake class. Had opened up in Lake Ridge. It wasn't well known. It was in the, a small part of a shopping strip mall. Yeah, Paula. And Corey went in, talked to the owner, filmed what the place was about. And for people like me who might have parking anxiety, she films the parking lot. And say, this is exactly where it is. This is how it goes. And then when you are able to watch it, it makes you more comfortable in going. Again, you've got to leave your house. I hate it. Yes. I have to physically prevent Mentally. myself to go in to do these things. I have to be like, come on, Corey. Just, it is see, awkward. It, it is awkward. You clicks. filmed a car wash yesterday and did a complete 360, and I was wondering what that looked like watching you. <laughs> yeah, because Corey's like, ah. Oh. So Corey, uh, they opened up a new car wash in an outskirt of Lake Ridge. And 
a lot of people had been burned by the original car wash. I'd been there for years <laughs> and had it closed, shuttered. So then it got bought out by a franchise. It just opened, but Corey's like, yeah, it has a track system. And I know a lot of them don't. If you don't know what a track system is, you haven't had anxiety peg the rev limiter. <laughs> when you pull into a car and you have to, a uh, car wash and you have to line up with yeah, this and track. Yeah, they're and like, they're doing this hand movement like that, back there. Did, uh -uh. The other guy, he did, did this. Oh, he does the most right <laughs> So Corey's like, just a heads up, guys. It does have a track system. However, I get to use my own towels at the end, and they have included vacuums. Again, worthless stuff. You're like, who doesn't know this? <laughs> but it's this value added uh -huh. content. Let me be your eyes and ears in this community. Yeah. Moving on, resource lists are great. List of places that are closed. List of splash pads. These lists, list of playgrounds, they're really easy to kind of generate. You can do them from the comfort of your home. I am going to uh -huh. encourage you to go out and take a picture of the playground. Yes. Um, but creating a resource list, hyper local area. I know you're going to want to think, I'm going to open this to all of Northern Virginia. Just think of all the people that will join. Once it's too big, it's worthless. Yeah. Cause then, cause then what matters to someone down the road yeah. isn't going to matter to this person. They're, they're going to not find value. And then your group dies because it's too broad. We live in a extremely dense area. So like Corey, if she gets a lead from somebody in Ashburn, they're not, call, they're not driving they're to not. Lake Ridge. There's about 200 acres between me and Ashburn. Right. So if you live in a very low populated area, you can expand that a little bit. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have an area. Only 15 people live here. We want to expand that Idaho. <laughs> All of the state. <laughs> so you got to kind of keep in mind that that's going to be different depending on your area. Mm -hmm. Now, if hyper-local area, if you live in a suburbia type area, you're going to want to niche it down as tight as possible. Mm -hmm. It's going to feel weird. It's going to – but we said the riches are in the niches. Niche thrice, name your price. Same thing applies here. <laughs> if I could yell, niche it down to you guys. Uh, those resource lists. Now, uh, a good resource list that people were looking for, and I'll have to do it in a year, is what grocery stores were open on New Year's. I saw great places to watch the fireworks on great, New Year's. Great. What takeout places for New Year's? Because um, not everything closes uh -huh. for New Year's like they do on Christmas. So people are like, yeah, I don't want to cook. Where can I go? So that would have been a great. So what, what you're going to think, you, you lazy group manager, you're going to, think, you're going to Google it. No. But you're going to see that Google is going to say these hours may vary, which means you have to call. So if the week leading up to New Year's, you call these places. And say, are you open and on? Then, yeah. And then you create a little list. It doesn't have to be 50. And talk about value added. Give me 10 takeout places. Yeah, 10 good takeout places. So a right. Chinese restaurant. Uh, McDonald's. Give me two grocery stores. <laughs> yeah. I only need one or two. And then um, you can kind of create those resource lists. Again, all you're seeing here that everything is requiring an investment from you. I know. What we haven't said is you got paid anything. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a second because mm -hmm. you are going to put out more than you get back yeah. for a long time. And it's going to feel weird because you're going to be like, this is not how businesses run. Can I say this? Yeah. You're going to get a tinge bit resentful. Absolutely. You're going to grow this group get paid zero dollars and someone's going to recommend another baker in your group rude <laughs> a boot it's okay <laughs> it is okay we just need them we just need to work quietly consistently mm -hmm. in in the dark um moving on and you're going to see this in almost every section of growing these groups consistency 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 you are the only person growing this group you're, you're the, the only, only one who cares People are looking at you for yeah. guidance. <laughs> and you're going to be frustrated with your audience. Like, come on, guys, help me. No, you are it. They will follow your lead eventually. But until then, you need to stay consistent. The minute you fall off your consistency train, your group is dead in the water. Yeah. And, and, it's and so, nobody's going to save it. It No, it's so hard to revive a dead group. Absolutely. Corey and I have had to do it a handful of times. Almost wish that we just would start over. Yeah. But it's the chicken and egg. It has a foundation. It doesn't have that awkward 250 people saw this. Nobody reacted. <laughs> yeah. But consistency is key. Even if you are talking to yourself, talk to yourself consistently. I know. I, I, I can't begin. This will be this will be the crux on which many of you will fail will, with these. This, this is where I see most groups. One, you didn't make enough content at the beginning because you didn't get enough eyes. And two, you made enough content and then you ghosted them because life, life got, got busy. busy. I see you doing it to your bakery groups. And that one's even easier. This one would be exponentially harder to resuscitate. We always say, bring out the defibrillators. Let's drop a meme. <laughs> <laughs> and the way that Facebook's group algorithm works is the more times people come to the group, the more often they'll see the group. And now you can see it when you're scrolling through your feed and it says, do you want to see more posts from this yeah. group? The way you're going to get people to click the yes is that that content is good. That content is consistent. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And it's unique. And when, as a group admin, for those who aren't an admin, I can see how many groups people who request to join are already in. That is a new feature they just rolled out. 
I no, you used to be able to see how many groups you couldn't click down and see. Oh, now you can, group, see you can see what groups yeah, it is. Now I can be future. like, oh, you're Woodbridge, Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that shows me people are not in one or two groups. They're in 50. They're in so many groups. So you're fighting the algos. Yeah. Not only the algo of the feed, the ad, you're competing with other groups. <laughs> so the way you're going to be able to kind of do that is consistency. And the way, okay, so we always talk about this, the way to stay consistent is post content. What content you got to create these buckets. So we've actually created buckets. Do you want me to read the ones yeah, that we Sure. Sure. It's just sloppy. We just took notes while we were out to lunch the other day. Here's I, the thing also Heather said is these content buckets, you don't have to be like, they're not, Tuesday is trash day. You know, you don't have to announce them. It you just incorporate be a strategy. Them. So you're not held to this, oh, well, Friday yard sales post never went up. I guess that's done. You know, you can keep them in your back pocket. I would say, I said according to this. We'll put out these content buckets. We'll see how they respond. But we have to stay consistent over a couple months, and then we'll determine what to incorporate and when to drop. What to drop. And it's okay, okay to drop stuff. That's that strategy. Mm -hmm. It would be not strategic to keep something that's failing going. <laughs> Ask me about my last relationship. Uh, we had – so these are just ideas. We were throwing noodles against the wall, see if they stuck. Yard sale Friday or fur baby Friday. Yard sales uh, gets real cold here. They go away. They're only here for the spring and the summer. So we said, okay, maybe fur baby Friday. We had tested a group with a post. I said, I'm having a bad day. Can I see a picture Listen, of an animal? Like, loves a pet. They love their pets. So fur baby Friday. That would probably stick. And then we can incorporate yard sales on Friday kind of towards the spring. The, yeah. So pivoting, which pivoting. is really fine. Maybe the fur baby Friday will have been discontinued by then because yeah. it didn't respond well. Uh, we threw this one out there, Trophy Thursday. It's kind of like the Wednesday wins in the group. But, like, how did you create a win? Again, we're trying to create community. We're trying to en get these people to engage with each other, to see each other as humans, yeah. not traffic. Uh -huh. Or a little profile photo. <laughs> yeah. So Trophy Thursday, again, not sure if we like it or not. It's just written down. Shout out Sunday. This one I tested this past Sunday. We created a graphic for it and said, hey, just shout out any company that's not yours that's in this area. Your Baker Boss baby riding box. <laughs> I really like Macy Mall cooking up. It's makes good. Yeah, and I said you just can't tag yourself. So, so again, we're not tagging. We're not making any sales at this point. We are saying let's how much can. And then these people said, "Oh, I found this lady in the group. She, uh, she helps keep plants alive or something." Yeah. I was like, oh, "That's so interesting. I had no idea people did that." <laughs> the lady's like, "I left Sunday and the plant's still alive on Monday." And I was like, "That that is great. That's hilarious." <laughs> Uh, walk about town Tuesday. Again, you can kind of see the alliteration here with the yeah. Tuesday walk about town, whatever. We just, we're trying to create these buckets. So what that walk about town one is me going and making the valuable content in video form. And Corey went to that car wash and said, there's a track system and then did a tour lady, I guess, in the parking lot. I by the video. Video, like a bit of <laughs> There's so many people there. I just, and, it's but here's what I needed to know is that the vacuums are free. They give you a towel to the, pull yeah. off and clean your car down and that track system. I think you, and you'd mentioned that. that it had new ownership. I said new ownership. Then you have sales Saturday. Now that's the one where Corey sells on Saturdays. So you're going to say, well, the twins, you told me not to sell. You're going to be the first person posting on sales Saturday. You might be the only person posting if the group is now. <laughs> but I guarantee you a lot of people will want to post on sales yes. Saturday because they're in the whole get, take, 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 give. You're coming from the give, 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 take. So on sales Saturday, post a, make the post that's almost a template for the other people to pattern their sales posts yeah. after so we want to use line breaks we want to use emojis we talk about copy hooks uh formulas and heather's like why are you you might be like why is heather giving away the tips on how to sell in my group that's because it creates more engagement on those posts mm -hmm. if you just let people post on sales saturday it, a, a lot of people an ungodly amount will just post the link Links I was thinking a picture well. of their business cards is what I see most. In a picture of a business card. But like that is not the quality content we need. We need them to be more excited about their business. So the commenters are excited about giving right. them their money. So Corey will post a, and it's again, the same principles that we talk about when posting in other community groups, you're going to practice here, but better. You're going to have an eye-catching graphic. You're going to have a hook. You're going to have a everything you need. So a website company name, email, uh -huh. you know, things like that in a bulleted list. You know, I like a bulleted list. If you post from your computer, you can create formatting, which yeah, I love. You can. And that sales Saturday post, I love it. And people are like, some groups don't allow you to sell at all. 
They'll do those threads, which is pretty rough. Yeah. Why I like the sale Saturday, make your own post is because you can see how active a group is before mm-hmm. you join it. And that will that be That pads the numbers. numbers. When you go to join a private group, it says X many posts in the last 30 days. Yeah. Those sale Saturdays can help you pad that number to see that maybe there was 100 make posts it look in the last. a little more active. Yeah. So that is a great way. But it also allows you to uh, support other uh I can't tell companies. you how many business I bought from. So here's a big thing, and we'll get to this in just a second. Corey and I said on when we made this list is every post made not by us or by us needs to have a comment from both of us. It does. Uh, and that encourages people. People love to make a post and get a response. They do. They don't care don't if it's just wrong. like – so somebody had done balloon arches, and I said, I'll, I'll never not like seeing a balloon arch. I love looking yeah, at them. Just- Heather's not going to buy a balloon arch, but what she's doing is creating community by commenting on it. I saw Heather – the other day said, I, hey, I don't know, but I'm going to bump this post for you with this comment. And I added value. The person said, thank you. They felt good because an uh-huh. admin replied to them uh-huh. and supported them. So it's easy to do. In my comments, I like to include emojis. I like to include small jokes, uh, not just thank you, right? We just, just want to kind of connect bump. with the person. <laughs> yeah. So if there was a balloon arch, I, and I say, I just love balloon arches. Like call me a five-year-old and stick a fork in me. <laughs> yeah. I love don't balloon arches. Don't just stick a fork in the balloon. <laughs> yeah. So you can kind of do more by creating community, creating a conversation, asking, even if you don't intend to buy from somebody. And that's what our rule was for the vendor blending. If you saw a vendor you weren't going to buy from, would you mind commenting and supporting and asking a question? It's okay to say, does anyone know a good electrician around here? I might not need one today. I need it tomorrow. Manufacturing but what you're buddy. going to do is get referrals, which is fantastic, mm-hmm. and you're going to get the engagement, and you're going to hear what people post. I always tell people the admin is just the air traffic controller of a group. So la- last night, somebody <laughs> in Corey's group that I'm trying to help with, somebody had asked at 5 p.m., does anyone have a carpet cleaner? New Year, new me, I guess. And then at 9 p.m., somebody asked us, anybody have a carpet cleaner? And I said, oh, it's so great. Somebody actually asked this uh, a couple, and they got some good recs. Here's the link. Yeah. I didn't punish them you did, for you asking did not. a question. I need their posts. Right. I do see a lot of groups punish people like, here's yeah, a search feature. Yeah, we don't want to do when that. We're, we're a baby, desperate. We're a baby group. Mm-hmm. We need those posts. We're desperate. <laughs> Someone, right now it is Girl Scout cookie season. Just Yo opened. Party. And that is a great way to grow your group. So I saw someone saying, here, I'm selling Girl Scout cookies. And in another post, someone said, I'm looking to buy Girl Scout cookies. Mm -hmm. While I didn't buy them, I said, hey, lady, I'm going to tag you in this post if someone's looking for them. Great. I had to be in the group to find that, though. Now, what else could you do? A resource list of local Girl Scouts selling cookies. That can be you. And what you can do is create a post saying, I'm looking for all the Girl Scout cookies. I'm making a resource list. And then create another post. When you see how this content creates content. Uh, we have Meme Monday. Uh, memes are great. But again, make them hyper, hyper, hyper local. Niche it down. But you're like, I don't know how to make memes. And don't. Uh, find something. I haven't bought a cookie cutter all year and posted at 9 a.m. on the first day of the year. Did really great in the sugar In the sugar market. Market. Right. Then I found another one. Because could I have shared that meme in the group? Yeah, it would not have hit. It said I haven't no bought. It would have made sense if you knew I was a baker, but you wouldn't. Yeah, have it would have been worthless for a group of local moms. Yeah, so it said, I haven't bought from Amazon all year. And it that is. did well mm-hmm. in that group. So that's that hyper local. And then again, I can make a lot of memes on traffic, which resonates with a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Lake Ridge is, is sourced. It has one entrance and exit road. Old Bridge. Of course, if there's an accident on Old Bridge, you're not getting Yeah, home. you're not going home. <laughs> right. So you can make a lot of memes about those kind of tropes that are hyper-local that only yeah. you guys would know about. The meme will be unshareable outside of this group because it won't make sense, but it will work to create the community. And then Corey's adding, I wish it were gone Wednesday. And that's in competition with those buy nothing, sell nothing groups, which are great. They're hyper-strict. Hyper. Right. You have to, you have to make people – simmer. I was reading one. like I was in Corey's groups, your local group for that. Yeah. I just wanted to see because I was uh, I was living in an apartment at the time. I didn't have a I porch. So I was like, can I just yeah, drop this stuff you? off there? So I joined her Buy Nothing, Sell Nothing group. Not Corey's not running it. It's run off that franchise or whatever that is. Yeah, it's like a nonprofit. Profit. And it was like, I, I I love those groups. But somebody's like, I have a half-used candle. And people are like, I would love to simmer for this. Like the simmering. It, no, it, it's not I would love to simmer. It says my grandmother once burned. Oh yeah, you have the to same make scent. this like pitch to them. This, I want to say, I don't. I'm a group rule follower. But yeah. The amount of times my hand has been slapped. That those are groups managed. They'll they'll change the rules on you. So then you'll yeah. be like, have to post the cross street. You can't do a speed give too often without looking like you just clean out your closet, you which have, is what everybody wants. Yeah, you have doing. to let it marinate. You can't. Oh, they had a lot of rules on pickups, how the pickups go. And then, oh, you have to post that it's been given. 
you, you have to go and update your post. Not allowed to delete a post if you find out you can't have any money out. involved. No money involved. Because they're buying nothing. So There's nothing. just a lot of rules. I can appreciate those groups. I can absolutely, absolutely. It but is. It is like getting a PhD to be able to like a poster. So like, w- since we're not a necessarily a buy nothing, sell nothing group, I thought let's make a wish it were gone Wednesday with like I don't care if you get if, away at two seconds. And if that if that goes chaotic and we don't like it, we'll scrap it. Absolutely. Right. So it's again testing that group dynamic. I'm not sure any of these will work. I think shout out Sunday barely got off the ground. A lot of it was me. Talking to other people. You, you did great. Tagged my own. Did, I tagged a sushi great. place a lot. I tagged my, the, the ring pail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and somebody else tagged. And I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, and then, so that is those content buckets. The content buckets help kind of give you a structure. They're a bit of training wheels. They give the group a little bit of consistency. Mm-hmm. Uh, people like to know, okay, like, and it allows you to enforce rules. Like yesterday, some lady had said, I'm selling tickets to a book reading. I was like, oh, if it involves a selling of something, it has to go on sale Saturday. Yeah. So sorry for the confusion. Looking forward to seeing your post. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I can have these content buckets really enforce those rules as well. Uh, and then we have a monetary investment. This one hurts my feelings. This one, this one is... It's where a lot of people are going to check out right now. Yeah, because to grow a group, it may require, I'm going to say if you want a quality group, it does require financial investment. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, I'm literally paying to pad other people. They told me I can't sell. But then they're telling me to put money behind this. Here's the thing. You got to trust the process. A quality group is grown through antics like Facebook ads or it's grown through giveaways. Those cost money. Mm -hmm. You are funding something that you're technically not profiting off of yet and may not for a couple months. Yeah. So I'm going to say set aside a, a part of each order or take a budget line item and fund it if you're a wine or like I am and say, okay, I'm allocating this month $100 towards this group, whether that be used in Facebook ads for 50 bucks in a $50 giveaway. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it. And it hurts your feelings. It, it hurts to pay for something. How we grew SEM, I'm trying to remember back, we gave away a airbrush system. We did. And how I grew this local community group was a $50 gift card to two people. 100 bucks. <laughs> hey, man, we'll go to lunch right after this. Hey, welcome, Tommy welcome. Tom, we are on you after oh, this. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I also would like to go to Nothing Bun Camp. Yeah, when I said Nothing Bun, he was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so you gave two $50 gift cards or one? 50? Two. So 100 bucks. Yeah, 100 bucks. Just right there. Not chump change. Not you could do. Chump you could probably get the same results with twenty five dollars gift I'm cards, sure. but it is money going out and none coming in. Me going to these shops to take videos, like I, I don't go and take a video at a shop I'm not eating at. But so you buy something, yeah. So I, I buy food, so yeah. I don't look creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're putting, you're outputting, you're not investing. If you can believe this statement, if you follow these principles on creating these con, these value added local groups, you will make money from this, and it will become your number one lead source. But in the meantime, it's not, and you're paying for it. I know. So when we ha- we have the Facebook page, I post my local videos to there, tag the businesses, you know, and hopes that they share it too. And then I have run ads to those because that's still value mm-hmm. added and ask the people on the post to join the group. Yeah. You see my little funnel? Yes. My little funneling them into the group. Yeah. Corey and I, uh, when that other admin stepped down, I was like, ooh, we need something to turn this around real quick. So money where my mouth is. Two two hundred fifty dollars gift cards to a local grocery store. Turns out everyone likes groceries. Although sometimes like I don't like that grocery store you're giving these Wakeman's. two. Wakeman's. That's okay. You know what? Sometimes people are lying, <laughs> food lions, and I don't know. Personalities yeah. are crazy. You can't take it personally. So no. I was like, hey, even if you win this uh, and you don't like the grocery store, give it to regift. Yeah. I'm not going to police it. Regift it to me. I love Wakeman's. That that put and you're like wow 500 i don't know to, to give five that totally fine had there needed to get her name in this group that she's Hello. been adminning Baker and had not been posting boss babes <laughs> posting <laughs> uh growth strategy okay so we talked about the content strategy is the growth strategy they'll be internal though because you can't see what happens in a group until you join it the growth st- strategy outside of that group and i'm gonna put this one as the number one poaching but do it within the legality of the other groups <laughs> you're poaching from right okay me and Heather were talking about this. A lot of people just start a group. There's no page. So the only way you can grow that group is by linking it in other groups. It, and uh, some groups allow it. Some groups do not. The rules are there. If you get if you get a slap on a hand, take it as a grace period that they said, hey, don't do yeah. that. Yeah. And, and learn that they – so in a sugar cookie marketing group, we don't allow poaching. And you might be like, well, that's rude. Hey, listen, what I do allow is adding your – local cottage state bakery group to uh-huh. a list. And so I can manage that poaching in a structured way so that the group doesn't become, join my group, join my group, Absolutely. join my group. Or we do 
we incentivize, you can teach a whole Facebook lot. And link your group. I don't and care if you're end, selling a product, I, link, link it. Link all, link all your groupies. <laughs> and then if I see, and there is a time where I'm absolutely linking to a group of someone's learning for cake balls, they link to the you cake ball You love the vanilla. Uh, Idris, vanilla. There's a, a vanilla yes. bean group. There's yes. nothing competing there. It's not poaching, and uh-huh. I don't mind when people link it. So when you go into another group, I would say maybe not that hyper-local So I'm going to tell group. you, instead of making a post that says, join my group, and another person's group, it's a tinge bit disrespectful to the admin. I would delete that admin. so hard. What I want you to do is, if someone's looking for a hairdresser, I want you to say, this was, person was actually recommended in my... At. At. Tag page. Tag group. Tag group. I haven't used her, but I saw from the comments, it looked like she was great. Maybe check her out. So that is a slower way to grow the group. It is a more indirect way to grow the group, but it's a value added way to grow the group. Because remember, it's not just a numbers game. It's a it's a quality over quantity. I'd rather a group of 300 active people than 3,000 dead people. I know. And with the giveaway things, I always say, credit a little carefully. Giveaways can create a group of, <laughs> of take, 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 takers. <laughs> Yeah, we just want free stuff, and we don't necessarily want that. So you got to incorporate that. How you get them is how you keep them. If you got them by by doing by this, and giving away, <laughs> yeah. you're going to keep a group of people who uh-huh. want to take from you. Right. So poaching, as long as it's done in a value added content way, I like it very slow, very strategic, and I do not like just join my group. That's worthless. Um, that you're just going to get a duplicate of another group. Yeah, it'll be copy and paste. And what you're going to see is that people who post in groups post the same thing in multiple groups, and you're just going to be a duplicate. And it, like, truncates them, and then it'll be, like, so-and-so posted this in three different groups. Right. Dead to me when you're done. (laughs) Uh, Facebook ads. Again, money where your mouth is. Uh, You're going to run Facebook ads. If your group has that feature rolled out to it, you can run directly to a group. It does pipe it through yourself. Hate that. I wonder if I switch to the new page experience, if Maybe I could pipe so. it through there. I'd have to think about it. Also, with that whole, where was I going? My brain just like farted and it's hungry. They are sending me so many videos of my car. It's not, you can check it after. Okay. You can flip your phone over. I can't. Where did they find me? Where did they say your car is so fixed? <laughs> um, with the five, I can't remember what I said. Sorry. Mm. Had to throw me with her. He said, so you said something about fart and stomachs. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook ads as we were talking about piping it through new page yeah. experience. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Corey, we were running a Facebook ad for her page and on the comments of people coming there, she's going back as a page and saying, Have you joined the group yet? <laughs> I'm trying to trigger something in your so sorry. <laughs> Giveaways for group invites, just like we grew the sugar cookie marketing group with the airbrush. You could do that too. Keep in mind how you get them is how you keep them. Mm-hmm. The way I do it is everyone can only invite one person. One person lives in Lake Ridge and entered to in it. win a contest. It does require a little bit of uh, creating a list of people yeah. who didn't. I did make this weird old list. It was paper and pen. Absolutely. Trying I'd to- rather die than <laughs> see a paper and pen list. <laughs> Uh, page posts. Uh, so you can post about your group on your bakery page, a little cross pollination there, but odds are you're selling to the same people you'd want in that group on your bakery page. You can say, Hey, bakery fans, bakery people who support me. I've created a hyper local group. I'd love to invite you to join. So I can support you. Mm -hmm. You guys have done so well supporting me. I would like to invest. I would say it's not a VIP group. It is a local community group where we find what's going on about town. And you barely mention. That you have a bakery. Remember, you're only posting that on Sale Saturday. You're following your own rules so people don't feel this weird. Oh, she just sent it to me again. Yeah. You know, like, oh. You have to you have to abide by your rules stricter than anybody else has ever I abided know. And by And do you know rule. how many times I wish I could delete some other baker's yeah. tag? Yeah. No, you're going to be, I love you, guys. <laughs> You, that happened. The local community group had created oh, by a real estate agent. There's a lot of real estate uh-huh. agents in this area. There's a lot of houses. None of them are for sale right now. But uh, the you, and you're allowed to do this. She removed anybody who was a real estate agent because she said, "I don't want to support you." And at the end of the day, that was the rule she created. So, and that's how the group abides. <laughs> that really does. You're not allowed to be a real estate agent. She'll look you up, see if you're a real estate agent, yeah. and then say no. And what well, it's whatever you want to run it, it's up to you. But I would keep in mind that could create a little. We like community over competition. At the end of the day, I I eat roughly three times at the very least, plus snack a bunch. So other bakers can be in there. It's totally fine. Mm-hmm. You can't get resentful. You can't. You got to just say the real sales Saturday. Anybody can tell. Yeah. So in my mind, the way I do it is, I am a higher priced end bakery. Everyone is going to want to pay that price. And there's more room for people. Plus, there's only 24 hours in there. And there's only 24 hours. Right. So just kind of just kind of go in there like a non-bipartisan. 
You're bipartisan. Not bipartisan means you are Ooh. very biased. <laughs> you're bipartisan. It's fine. You are here to run a community group. You're not a baker. You have a community group hat on. Anyone who posts on a sales Saturday is actually supporting that goal. Y- yes. Uh, now we have group maintenance. Uh, again, it's hard to grow it, but once you've got a little bit of a foundation of people, you need to maintain it. Again, if you ghost this stuff, it's done. It's dead in the water. You, this, at this point, you can mentally check out just a tinge because I, I wish I didn't mentally check out just a tinge. You can't, yeah, once the, the group, group can, starts running can run itself. itself, I don't think it should ever do that. I think as a, if you are a good admin, you are involved in this group at all stages. Mm-hmm. It is easy to say, well, the content is creating itself, and I know I do that in Sugar Cookie Marketing Group, but Corey's like, get your butt in there and put I up am, a fireside I, chat. I am. And I'm like, well, they're asking, no, you're an admin. You're As an admin, your posts are seen more, which uh-huh. is how Facebook favors them. Uh, Corey has group maintenance. Make sure your, your join questions, so the three questions they answer when they're joining, uh, are meant to weed out spam. Something Corey does is, hey, well, in the group rules, there's one day that you can sell on. Which day is that? Is that? This one group. This, I was just, you know, you get nosy in your group. She yeah. shouldn't be in. Mm-hmm. It was like, it was about like divorced people who are mad at their spouses. I'm not even married, oh. but I was like, yeah, join. But it was like, listen, in the rules are three hidden words. You must find <laughs> them and put them in the first question. <laughs> and I missed a word because I could not find it. And they booted me. Oh, so I, so I found funny. it and then rejoined. But yeah. I was like, wow. We don't want them so hard. I can see why they probably have those. Yeah. Because you don't. They do, X in there. <laughs> right. They do not want – they want very high-quality members. Yeah. You can do different types. There's multiple choice. Here's I would thing. say do multiple not. choice is not great. What happens is these bots, these scripts, these scam accounts are getting smarter. When your your entry questions are yes and no answers, they know how – they'll just put yes and no. Yes and no. Will. Or the, they'll, it'll automatically choose the first question in a multiple choice answer. Right. So we want to make sure that we're asking questions that require a little bit of brain no, activity. And here's how we do it. Okay. The Saturday one, I, I just want to reiterate that you can only sell on Saturday. So that's why I'm having you read that because I don't want you to get in the group and sell and then I got to boot you right away because right. you're not going to like me. Right. The next one is what place around the area would you like us to highlight? You'd have to be around the area to know what to feature. Oh, that was one that you like. Like, what are, what's your favorite restaurant? And I love seeing what people write. And you join the cookie college, it says, what would you like to learn? Also, that's how I make my new list of classes. When you join Sugar Cookie Marketing, it says, what do you want to learn most about marketing? It helps me as an admin to know where I need to go. But it also helps us as admins to know who's a scammer and who's actually a quality content person. Here's the wild thing. Now you can decline a request to join and give them feedback. So I would say, hey... Declining this, I'd love to have you rejoin. Just make sure you answer the questions. I almost can guarantee if they don't answer those questions, they probably are spam accounts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's always nice. to. Be, and that decline with feedback is a great thing. If they are a spam account, you can decline and ban at the point that they yes. request to join, which is a great idea. And a lot well. of times if you have it where they have to type in something, the spammers have a script. They'd yeah. be like, I would like to contribute to the benefit of the group. You can read it and see. Oh, God. All right. That feels like you want to pay by e-check. <laughs> uh, don't use Automod for approval. Uh, AI is rolling out to groups. So you can I get on the wait that. list. But right now they have Automods, which means then artificial intelligence moderator. You can set it up. Facebook automatically enables it at random times. I have to go in and disable it. I don't prefer Automod for group join request to get in. It's answer all the questions and agree to the group rules. Yeah, and then, then you you're automatically in. in, which means you're letting in a lot of that Rick scammer, draft. yeah, accounts yeah. and stuff. I would disable auto mod for automatic approval. It does create a backlog. It creates a new job to request to join, mm-hmm. but you have a thumb on your audience, and you can read those join questions. We help you know where Absolutely. to go. Absolutely, right now, people are losing their accounts, like real people losing their accounts to scammers. The scammers aren't changing the names. I know. They're actually like, keeping it. It's almost like you ke- they can't change the names now. Yeah. So it'll be like but Amy also Hiddleston. Think, I think Amy Hiddleston then will join as now it's a duct cleaner and a local yes. mobile car wash dealer. Oh, that detailer. one's rampant. But you can't tell. Like you'll look at their post mm-hmm. and I'll be like, I cannot tell. Here's what I've suspected of this old crappy car that there is a ring of genius scammers among us. One of them infiltrates a group and only tags the scam group so they've created their own group we we can't ban them they create this one profile frank he goes in and tags this group anytime somebody's looking for something for sale so the thing is i'm looking for it one of those keywords is triggering the script to go tag the page once you join the group they've taken over a mom's page up until november was pictures of beautiful (laughs) children now it's pictures of dodge parts (laughs) and this mom is like 
and and within them they've created eight accounts. Three it's, are one's a grandmother, Dodge Parts grandmother. One's a mom. One's Frank. They're getting smart. Three pages. Within every post in that group, those eight pages will create a social proof by liking, commenting, and hearting the scam post. And then there's one plant, and he's just saying that he bought all the parts. And it's Social genius. proof. Really? Works. It's manufactured. It's manufactured, and boy, does it work. Yeah. So those scammers, they'll infiltrate your group, and then they'll plug their own group now. And, and then you'll lose these people, and then people feel unsafe in your group. You can't make them feel unsafe. Group th- group rules, you can make up to 10 group rules. I suggest using all 10 spaces and make them broad. Just something, because when somebody violates a group rule, you can actually cite it uh, when you delete their yeah. post or suspend them. When you do that, you can say, oh, you created drama. Now that's ambiguous. You can't, a lot of things are you can say is dramatic. Uh-huh. If you say you, if you make your group too, your group rules too, too niche. specific. Then it's going to be they like. They can work around it. They can say, well, I didn't technically do that. And they're right. So you want to keep those group rules broad. You want all 10 of them. Uh, common group rules, if you want to do no, no cursing, oftentimes when people do curse, it's because they're upset. So you, that's one way to stop uh, conflict. And that's why when someone's post or comment disappears, I don't want them hating me. So I like to cite. Make the groups. Like you, have, guy. you have a curse word in there. You can repost it without the curse word and it'll be totally right. fine. Uh, other group rules that we have, there's no drama in the Bahamas. Easy one to just say, absolutely no politics. I'm going to encourage you. I don't care where you live. <laughs> just say that it's not allowed. It will make your group exceptionally to- uh-huh. toxic. What happens when groups get violent in the comments is it can shut down your group. And, and that was on no part of your own. It's, yeah. Facebook holds you admins to a higher standard to keep these groups safe. Uh, no blocking admins. Always a great one to, get, to have out there. Yep. If you block an admin, they're... If you don't under- know this, Facebook tells the admin that they've been blocked. <laughs> so, and there's a, a a button that you can say is remove anybody yeah. who's fallen in this. Uh, what other group rules do we think is broad and worth it? Um, we I say- think always having uh, them agree to a sale Saturday is a good idea. We do. So, it's I love tagging that one. That's probably the most broken rule. So that's the one I can tag the most. Like, oh, it seems like you're selling. Because remember, save these the become take 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 gives uh-huh. when we, we need them to be give, 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 takes, and that's going to be heavy moderation. Another, another one I know we didn't put on the list, but we use it a lot, is uh, word words that you put on this modification or oh, on this within, mod list. Within Facebook, there's a keyword alert. So I can add any keyword, and it will send every admin a ping that this – Keyword has been used, and you can go and review where and it was it used. And it helps me immensely mod the group. So in the local community group, it, the one that is on there is delete if not allowed. Group one, you didn't read rules. Uh, also, you can ping admins. You'll see in groups when someone says admin, just they just type it, hoping it hits a keyword <laughs> alert to get the admin's uh-huh. attention on it. So. That is a way to do that. I'm going to encourage you in groups to not use the at everyone. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say if you used it, it's because something big happened. Uh, we don't want to annoy people. It does force you into their feeds, but an overuse of that will deteriorate. You, yeah, the group. you'll lose. You'll lose people, especially in these community game. groups. Yeah, especially if you're saying like at everyone. Sale I'm Saturday. Sale uh-huh. on DIY kids. Absolutely. Today. And only admins can actually do the at everyone. So you'd be abusing. Yeah. It. I just see sometimes members are like, at everyone. I'm and like, it tags like this page called at everyone. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that. I see at followers. Like, no, that's not there. <laughs> you tried that. <laughs> um, so that is our four steps into creating and generating a group. Now, the long term, the that consistency, that long term content strategy, that's where you're going to deviate from this kind of training wheels mm-hmm. list. It's going to be unique to your area. People who live in a farm community is going to be quite different than people sitting in traffic. Mm-hmm. But you're going to be able to kind of determine that. Another thing in groups I see, don't talk about crime if you don't if you do or do not want that. Don't talk about traffic if you do or do not want that. So you can kind of dial it into your specific area. In Merck, with the it's bre- just, we're Baker so bags. close to Washington D.C. But every time a helicopter would fly by, someone in the group would post. Well, did say, anyone see the helicopter? The FBI helicopter pad is in Burke. I yeah. So it was every post was. Did you see the helicopter? So they banned what's happening. They banned helicopter posts. And then a new group emerged called Burke, living in Burke with helicopters. With helicopters. <laughs> but I was a, I joined in a meme. I love to know what this helicopter was going. <laughs> Turns out it was a meme group, and yeah. I was wrong. But it was hilarious. I will say the long con of having a well founded and curated local group is it can make sales for you. How many people I have sold who are my neighbors who did not know I was baking, who were not in my baking page funnel 
that I've been able to bring into it now that the group has been established is immense. And what, how, you know, we talked about Corey creating business cards for the group that she can give to people picking up in Lake Ridge who live in Lake Ridge. It's it, cross pollination, right? Cross pollination. And you can really use that group to establish you. That's why my personal profile, it says, I, it, it doesn't say marketer. It says baker by day. Amateur baker by night. Something like that. It says <laughs> professional cookie on. eater, oh, yeah, amateur yeah. cookie baker, and then a link to my business page. So when I'm commenting in the group, and I'm not selling, and you get nosy and you go, click, oh, she's a baker. Do you know that you can create a unique uh, profile as a group user? Like So within those crappy car yes. groups, I tell people in my bio, this is the make and model and year and mileage so that when they go to say, what is this girl driving so I can help her, she's clueless. <laughs> They can say, oh, this is it. So even though it's reflected in my profile yeah. within that community uh-huh. group, it's not reflected anywhere else. You can also change your cover photo for that group specifically, your user oh, nice. profile in that yeah. group. Yeah, make it a cookly. <laughs> yeah. And now I've seen uh, within the groups, because Facebook is really appreciating them, Yeah, is that I can click on some member and I can see someone who reacted to their post now. Oh, nice. And click on it and see where it's taking me to. So you people who angry act to bully, your days are numbered. <laughs> your days are numbered. <laughs> Um, I'd almost add a rule that says no laugh react unless it's warranted because that is used as a it's bullying so, thing. It's so – because people are using it as truly. That was funny. This lady in your group posted a house for rent. I thought it was a really normal post. I couldn't see anything wrong. Yeah. The pictures were pixelated, so I wasn't sure if it was uh, – Malicious, but two people laugh react. There's only four reactions, two likes, two laugh reacts. And then the OP said, why are you laughing? And I even had to agree, but I could not figure out why? if they thought she was a scammer or if it was an oh, accidental weird. press. I didn't See, that makes people feel unsafe. It made them feel unsafe. I didn't know what to do. I t- clicked on the two laugh reacts profile and they've added value, weird. valuable content. So weird. again, it's a little bit of that judge jury executioner. I know. Uh, moving on to text, we have two. Thank you guys. It's 571-556-5644. Oh, I was like, I thought that's who texted me. I was like, that's a very local number. No, I am very stressed. That. Yeah, texted me about my car and I can't <laughs> Okay, it. hurry on. Okay. Hi, twins. First, let me thank you all for the knowledge that you pour into us. It's definitely helped my business and I'm excited to see what this year holds. You guys come off as Christian. Sorry if I'm wrong, but because I love to hear your people's stories, can you guys share what is one way that the good Lord showed off for you in 2023 relating to your business? Thank you and have a great year. Yeah, we were raised in Fundamental Baptist, so I went to private Christian school. We did. I, you did. You did. Did I, did. I not? <laughs> Since we were in kindergarten <laughs> until 12th grade. So we were had to wear really long skirts really long. and tuck in our socks. Where are these skirts are potato sacks? They were, potato I don't sack. know if they were when like, When you took hey. this skirt off, it stood up on its own. It was That's so starchy. Much like a potato sack. Uh, but yeah, we did. So what is one way you can say the Lord has blessed your business in 2023? Oh. Is this the my baking business? Yeah, this is she. Well, I mean, any bit. She didn't, uh, they didn't specify. For my baking business, being appreciative of every person that comes in, whether you want something small, like a little PYO, in knowing that taking that and giving them what they, like giving them best service, even though it's something so small can lead to bigger things. So I've appreciated every order big and small. That is not the question. What was the asked. question? Said, how has a good Lord showed off for you in 2023? Like how have, how have you flourished is what I'm gathering. I would say that I have flourished because I have a positive attitude. Given by God. <laughs> <laughs> What's yours? I was just saying, like, you know, I gotta say, I think the, if I wanted to, I said, see, it's all sugar. Oh, God. (laughs) Say that the sugar market group has only had continued growth. And I would think that's because you stay close to your ethics and you stay close to the principles that you're founded in. And gives you a good attitude. I have suffered with bad (laughs) attitudes, but I'm working on it. Sorry, I'll have to get that one. That is a good question. Okay, here's another one. Hello, Miracle Twins. I'm needing to up my game this year, and I'm considering joining to teach classes. I'm a full-time music teacher. I bake part-time on nights and weekends. I'm having a hard time pulling the trigger to join. Talk me off the ledge. Do you do you point? There's a typo there. Do you pointing me in the right direction to make my choice? Can you? Okay. She is talking. They are talking about the Cookie Class Kits. Cookie Class Kits has reached its twelfth month. 12. So that means it has 12 2023 classes. Because the classes drop a month early, it also has one 2024 class. And this week, it'll have a second 2024 class. So that's 14 classes. Tomorrow, the 2023 <laughs> classes disappear. They're gone. They're archived. 
You can no longer sign up for the membership and see them in there. So the common question I see is, I just don't get it, though. I don't get what you guys are saying. It is and it expires. When you go to teach a cookie class, there's a lot of strategy and planning to come up with the class curriculum. Then you got to turn around and you got to complete the curriculum. You got to do the class yourself. You got to make the steps for the class. You've got to come up with the colors for the class. Then you got to promote the class. Then you've got to fill the class. And then you got to talk to the people in the class. And then you got to teach the class. That's a lot of work. So Corey and I hate it because we've done it for so long. What we just said is, why don't we do it for other people? So we do all the prep planning, conceptualization, design, photography, promotion, copy, and follow-up. All you have to do is purchase the cutters so you can get them through Sweet Pink Olive. There's a couple deals there as well. You add yourself because you got to teach it, and then you got to add the dough and supplies, of which we tell you exactly what to purchase. Yes. So- you could teach all these classes. And you may you may think, well, I'm not ready to teach classes yet. Sign up, cancel immediately, but download everything now, today, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So you get all the 2023 classes because that is what's expiring out of the membership called Cookie Class Kits. Now, if you're in the Cookie College, they're not expiring for you. Just tune us out. You do not need to know this. You keep them in perpetuity. So you, as long as you're a member, can access them. So the the best thing about the 2023 classes and why I I am urging you guys to jump off the ledge, if that is what it is, Mm -hmm. is they're the most common classes. So February, Valentine's Day, March, Easter. April April was Easter, I think. What was March? It was the bugs. (laughs) Oh, March, spring. This year will be the leprechaun. So this year, the 2024 classes, Corey's doing the secondary most common thing for that month. Like, so in February, we did Valentine's Day last year. It was great. But also the Super Bowl happens in, in February. February as well. So this year, it's not going to be a Valentine's Day class. The 2024 class will be football. So you could essentially get the best of both worlds if you signed up today. If you sign up today, your membership's 30 days as long as you cancel before it renews. You get all the 2023 classes. You just have to download them today and tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Then you'll also get two 2024 classes. If you stick around, you'll get another set of 2024 classes, all 12. And you'll see. like So now when the 2024 starts, you'll have January's class, January, February. Then you'll January, February, March, mm-hmm. and it builds off each other. So if you signed up in July, you'd have six past classes that you could. So you might be thinking, why, not, why just sign up in December? I get all twelve classes. Yeah, but the people who signed up earlier have been teaching those classes yeah. all year. So they and get you're not going to want to teach summer fun in December. Right. <laughs> so yeah, you can stack the classes to teach in the next year. However, there's people who have been making these brand new classes locally and teaching to their audience. Now I'm going to say this: we're running two promotions right now. It's actually. The cookie class kits, you get all those 14 classes because I'll get that football class done Mm -hmm. this week. But the cookie college is only $68 for the next two days. So tomorrow we'll go – it'll be $68 on Thursday. We'll go back to $76. Mm -hmm. The cookie class kits is only $63. The cookie college is $68. So for, what, $5 more, you can get all the 2023 classes, all the 2024 classes, the private group, the freebie photos – and a ton of other, I think, 70 marketing courses, of which Corey's making me make new ones. I'm excited about In the that. Cookie College, someone asking this exact question, how much is a Cookie College right now? 68. So it's 68, and then on Thursday it goes back to 76. 68 was our original pricing when we launched with 20 classes, no freebie photos, no private group. It's now been two and a half years. Mm-hmm. And we have added so much more content, so many more classes, so many more freebies, so many cookie class kits, the $2 transfers, the digital downloads, the bakers. So that that membership is popcorn for a reason because it is the most value added and it's only a couple bucks more than our second membership. So cookie class kits only gets you that curriculum. Yeah. The cookie college gets you that curriculum and how to teach it and how we find yes. audiences. And you can watch us teach classes, a, a class I recorded. It is worth it to spring up to that $68 if you're already in the $63, even if you stay for a month. Yeah. You actually buy more days to download those classes, of which they're very chunky because there's some high-res photos in there. But you can also get so much more. I'll make a post about it in the main group for us to do that. Moving but the on. time is ticking, and Heather extended it. This will not be extended past. Corey, the I said let's do seven days. She said three. I said three. You either poop or get off the pot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I would hate to have to bleep that one out. Okay, so that is a great question. Thank you so much for texting in, and um, let's go to sponsors. Sponsors number one, A Core Backers. They okay. First off, A Core Backers is a photography backdrop. It is a Perfect backdrop for bakers. Why? Because it is food safe. Mm -hmm. Are there many backdrops out there that you can buy? Yes. Are they all food safe? Absolutely not. There's very few that are actually food safe. Ask me how I know. I did the research. I looked them up. That is how I found a core backers way back in the day. Mm -hmm. I've been using them ever since. I love it. 
they're they're matte, so it's not going to create a glare when you're taking the photo. Nice. Um, it is rigid, which I like it, so you can turn it towards the sun, turn it away from the sun. If someone said to me, Heather, I'm going to buy a a cord backer, should I not? Should I? I'm going to always say yes. Uh, it, you buy with our eyes. Listen, my kitchen table, Corey on top. Hey, it was in style. S- point. Speckled. Is it salt? Is it pepper? Is it the coriander? It's top? distracting is what it is. And it's not a great place to take a high-end photo of something I'm charging a lot for. Uh-huh. These AE core backers can almost give you, make your house feel like a new space uh-huh. because you're taking it on these nice finishes uh-huh. that really say, like a marble AE core backers. A $50,000 kitchen model for 76 bucks? Yeah, for se- uh, 77 bucks. Yeah. yeah. So you can get these, transform your photos, make more sales, make higher end sales. Use code. Use code sugar cookie singular at checkout. It saves you twenty percent. They are launching a new. She, she has. She not keeps it fresh. That. She keeps it. She fresh. keeps it fresh. There's tons of colors: wood, colorful ones, matte ones. I do love white matte finish. Polar white is a great one. They are retiring it. You can order it. And I think there's a discount, and you're on nice. the wait list for it. Um. As it comes FOMO. In, I know. There's, so you'll have to check out her page to see what it is. But highly recommend. If your goal is to grow in 2024, invest in that one piece. But heck, though, you could, taking it back to today's podcast topic, let's say you buy, support local, you buy something. I do all the time. I did. Yes. My nothing but cake. Giveaway. You staged it. I staged it. So she used a local product. Nothing but cake is a franchise, but they're owned locally. But let's say you buy clay earrings from somebody in your yep. group and you take photos of that. Your photos are going to blow them out of water. You have all these tools because you've been doing uh-huh. photography. Mm-hmm. Now you have this backdrop. That person will be your bestie that you took the product photo I for. ordered Christmas macarons from the local macaron baker. She was, when she dropped them off, she's like, oh my goodness, I, never, I didn't even get to take a photo and I know you love photos because she knows I'm a baker yeah. too. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take, I'm going to take a photo for her. They were amazing. And what did she do, Sharon? I said, this photo is yours. She has shared it everywhere. Right. Who wouldn't want somebody with that photography knowledge in these backdrops yeah. to kind of create that bunch of it. It's a great way to grow a community group. And to grow a relationship with somebody. Mm-hmm. Oh, Especially yeah. if you don't care if they take the photo. At the end of the day, what am I going to do with it? <laughs> Use it. Ask them, hey, if you know anybody, send them to my group. <laughs> Bikers who bike and merc. <laughs> um, moving on, we have Eddie, the edible food printer. If you didn't get one for Christmas, you can start saving what up What did you him. go wrong, Dad? Santa's this, Eddie is a direct-to-food edible food printer. It means he prints on food. With ink, you can Eat. It's amazing. It's With fascinating. edible ink, but yeah. it looks like a printer. It looks like you click Control P on your Canon. You can print edible ink on a piece of paper. You can print this edible ink on a cookie, on a cookie, and eat a design. All you had to do is spend three thousand dollars. And for people who are like, does it die or not? No, it doesn't. No, it's I don't pretty know how it works. crazy. It's a crazy machine. Yeah, he's not cheap for a reason because he he streamlines a lot of workflow. So I've seen a lot of people. I was asking people their goals in the sugar cookie marketing group, and someone's like, "I will buy an Eddie this year, and I'll use every order up until I can afford one to pay for it. I will not t- let Eddie touch my savings. Instead, I'll create an Eddie budget line Smart. item and fund him through each order. So that means Eddie essentially pays for himself, and then he's going to pay him for himself in the orders you're able to take. Absolutely. What you want to do when you get an Eddie is to you have to open your mind to learn. It's not just it's not just I'm going to get them and it's going to you have to learn. You have you to know? sell market. Yeah, there's That's a right. lot behind it, but you can set yourself up for success. What I don't want you to do is get an Eddie and not have touched it for one year. A lot of people do that. Yeah, but I want you to get the Eddie. I want you to be like I'm in open. My mind is open to growth. I'm gonna say that second price. You, the first price is buying them. The second price is learning. Yeah, that's why I say every cookie cutter, while they're fun to get, I mm-hmm. I see work behind uh-huh. them. <laughs> yeah, you got to see those two prices, <laughs> yeah. second cost. Um, last but never least is Bakety Bakes Royal Batch Royal Icing. It is meringue powder. Sorry. It makes royal icing. Excuse me. Excuse me. Right. Uh, down okay. dogs. Down dogs. How, How dare you? Not the bacon one. Royal Batch is a meringue powder. It has all the ingredients you need. I'm going to do corn syrup. Yeah, corn it syrup. It has white food coloring. Yes. Vanilla. Yes. Yeah. Vanilla food extract. That's ah, close. But I love it. You love it. It's so tasty because it already has vanilla in there. You don't what have to add anything. It does this thing. It lets your icing dry slower so you have more time to fix things. If your icing is crusting fast on you, just add less meringue powder to oh, your mix. Excuse me. If you're up. like, I'm really trying to work fast, you can add more meringue powder to your mix. It's silky smooth. It is the silky coolest smooth. thing to see 
It looks like silk. When you're pressing it out of the bag, it feels like a cloud. Oh. It's cloudy, but oh. not in a bad way. In a fluffy In way. a heavenly scent way. Silk ribbons pouring from Silk a... ribbons pouring from on high. Okay. So an angel... An angel comes squeezes, touches your cookie. An angel turns on the Bosch and mixes, it mixes the royal it batch. while they sing <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Not bad. And then you use it, and it's amazing. Use Go Twins to save you a little money, Derek. Saves you 10%. 10%. And what a fantastic little product. Thank you for our sponsors who sponsor us. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> Do you have a twin interest? A 20? A 20. Did I say that I got a... I think I said I got the same like raisin. You did. You did. You said it changed your little life. It did. Gosh, what has... Oh, I, I am trying this. You know, if you're unfamiliar, I do post a lot of either tutorials or reviews on the sugar cookie marketing underscore Instagram. Uh, underscore. Don't forget it. The other one is not us. Also <laughs> has like, zero posts. They posted their own <laughs> Instagram page. Um, I found, like, you know, like when you're making class, you're doing things for class and maybe a design's a tinge bit hard to picture. Yeah. There was this, it's a like a charcoal looking crown thing but it's made with edible oh wait i got target is it called like the 80 pen like it has a funny name i have no idea Did i ordered it? it yeah i saw it so you can write on the cookie but the the thing that you're writing with is edible like you can yeah. like literally bite it and eat it but what's the difference between that and an edible marker edible marker oh, it does dies. not like butter Arrow. so you can like really i you have got to make a video on this pencil i know it's so what crazy the what is it made of I have to wax? look. I can't remember. No, it's something you can eat. It's edible. R- right. Oh. So it's not wax. What are you doing? Are we not allowed to eat wax? Are you like, are they what are you doing with Red cheese. <laughs> are you eating that? Sit I think you need to light back I will out. take that Lila Burns and the candle. I'm a little hungry. I was hungry. hungry. We ate that outside. We're I'm hungry enough to eat a wax <laughs> candle right now. But what I was thinking, if you're in class, like the January cookie class kits has a snowman with snowman eyes. And I, in the class, I make two circles, and then we fill that in later mm-hmm. with the black icing. What if you just wrote Told the them where the circles are. Yeah, you put the just circles there. So class, Very like, nice. they're less frustrated. Their eyes are all the same size. I will say last year's Cookie Class Kids has a scarf in it with a checkered pattern. That and that's rough. what I was thinking. That was rough. That was the thing. A lot of times people with eddies will print it onto the cookie. Yeah, so Genius. I make the outline of the shape. They'll print yeah. it onto the shape. And as it is a guy, which is nice, but that is $3,000 and a considerable amount more work. Right. So Genie, so this is like, I'm not, you know, eddies, eddies in my sights, but I need something right now to teach All these classes. Right. So I was going to make a video on that this week. That was my twin interest. I like it. My twin interest. Okay. Does everyone have a bunch of cables and they don't know where they got them or where they go I to? This last week, but go ahead. Really? I thought mm-hmm. mine was that printing off of the thermal label printer. I yeah. It was a when I was like, why did you get a? You know, I'm printer? going to the other part of this. Well, you did touch on that last <sighs> week. I'm so boring. even. Even almost you said the sentence. Of my car's not been working, so I haven't even left the house. <laughs> <laughs> I saved Heather on that. I can't even got you. I only have left when you got me. You're welcome. I've gotten you so many times. No, I've gotten you for the mall. Thank you. I got you for chips and salsa. Podcast. Got you to take you to your mom's. Got you for the podcast. Yeah, He's I my do. mom. Corey's yeah. car is really nice too. So I'm like, put on my butt heat, please. <laughs> <laughs> my car where you go out. Anyway, so I went to Michael's again to get these you went photo. To Michael's? Yeah, I used to be car. Uh, yeah, that's where they sell these. Marshalls, Michaels, yeah. crafts. Wait, what are you getting? These, they were meant for people who do scrapbooking where uh-huh. you put photographs. So they're photograph organized. So it's one large plastic bin with a handle. And in it is about, I don't know, 20 small bins where you would put photographs and organize them. Okay. But I saw on TikTok last year, and I've been doing this, is put your cables in them and organize and just label them. smart. Right. So every, I mean, you have a lot of cables that come from, every time you get a device now, you get a cable. Listen. They end up all in one drawer. Right. And here's the wild thing. Everything's moving to USB-C. Love it, right? But yeah. they're rated for different things. So even your USB-C cables aren't functioning Listen, the same way. I'm just putting it. If it fits. It yeah. Fits. But sometimes if you ever wanted to connect <laughs> your phone to your computer, you need a USB-C cable that allows data transfer, not just charging. And then within charging, do you have fast charging, super fast charging, oh, archaically slow I know. Charging? I, I do need a solution. Yeah. 
So this is a solution. It's a and people are like, you must like organize it. No, I actually hate it, but I hate the thought of a cable drawer even yeah. more. So what I did for my birthday, I got a professional labeler, mm-hmm. and now I got a professional cabler. Can you <laughs> send me the link to the box? Yeah, right now they're on sale. <gasps> Usually they're forty. Okay, here's my thing though. Have you ever paid full price for anything at Michaels? No. There's a there's a forty percent coupon always right. floating about. So these are typically forty six, but for the first time ever, they were twelve dollars a piece. <laughs> Usually I'm paying twenty five. Yeah, twelve bucks. Yeah. You basically pay anything. <laughs> so I filled them up. Now I use some for cables and some for the small knickknacks of like I got a popple once. Popples, you know, yes. they're small things. Yeah. They're tiny. Then uh, like the key that goes to the mailbox that w- for the commercial yeah. mailbox. Like I'm not gonna. Keep. Right. So now I can keep them. I have one designated for like knickknack patterns. Yeah. Works. And the other ones for cables. And then I have labeled each of these with that professional labeler exactly what the machine is that the cable belongs to. It is frustrating. Genius. It is genius. It is a painful thing to do. I had, I've got, I was like, I had a nose hair trimmer, Whoa, beard trimmer. We're just going right in here. Yeah, listen, it's human. Yeah. It, nose gets hairy. <laughs> but I had one and it took batteries and I was so annoyed. I was like, again, yeah, you could use a battery every two days. Like you might not use it, but the, it's like draining the battery uh-huh. all the time. So I was like. I'll get one that's rechargeable. Do you think I know where the cord is? Now? Absolutely. Is not. my nose hair out of control? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I would say here's my whole life. I don't have kids. I don't have a husband. I can do whatever I want. You can. So I spent a lot of my time trying to get rid of that little anxiety of like, where is that cable? Yeah. Where is my birth certificate? Mm-hmm. Is my you, listen? You'll be proud. You got of me. it. I just copy mine. <laughs> I changed that. I changed the social security. My one. Um, I got the targeted in this. Organize your I know life. exactly what we're talking about. TikTok, the little I got it. Bit. Keep it in a fireproof bin. I know I don't have that. Yeah. But right now, nothing's in it. But right. we're getting there. You just had to stay consistent. consistent. You know that's the secret to life, consistency. Nathan Klotz did email me this morning. Did he find? Did he beat your I right? want to see if he... Nathan Klotz is this independent insurance agent. If you want to save some money... And you don't mind a small amount of inconvenience. Find these independent agents. They're not captive like State Farm, but they can sell State Farm. He said, I'll see what I can do this afternoon. The man is a wizard. I really did make him work for this one. If you can get your Nathan to sign up with Klotz, then he'll give you 10 bucks to Amazon. I got 10 bucks off of you just for referring you. Rude. I know. I couldn't have spent it any faster. (laughs) They get it, buddy. <laughs> okay, that wraps us up to this one. After this podcast, we're actually recording the podcast for the Cookie College. Cookie it College gets its gets own its own podcast. podcast. Corey said I was lame, and I said th- th- you were slacking, not consistent, and a loser. <laughs> so she is now doing that podcast with me, which we'll be recording right after I check the video of my guy. That I said. <laughs> Bye, guys.